Welcome back to MMA Osbreaker. Today we have a returning guest of ours, Chris Camozzi, who's on before every single one of his fights. Get ready to fight Tom Watson coming up here on UFC Fight Night 73 in Nashville, August 8th. Uh, Chris, is you're in a weird spot right now. Uh, uh, usually we catch you at home, we catch you at the gym. Um, you're on your way to a dance recital, right? A ballet recital for your daughter? Yeah, yeah. I finished up at the gym a little bit ago, and uh, she's finishing up her summer camp at Colorado Ballet, so she was doing a, a camp for ballet and they have a recital today how, how old is your daughter she's 11 is this is this like dance is what she's going to gravitate towards you know you can kind of tell about this age like you know if you're going to be a wrestler if you're going to be a jiu-jitsu guy if you can be a boxer you know if you're going to be a ballet dancer is that is that what your daughter's going to do uh as of now i think so you know she's she's hooked on it she she just got accepted to denver school of the arts next year so she's going to be going to middle school and high school at uh, um, at a school that they specialize in. I know you, you probably know about School of the Arts and stuff like yeah. that. So she'll be doing ballet at school, and then it's it's really tough, like academic school too. Yeah, School of the Arts um, uh, are usually pretty tough every city that they're in because it's, it's a full academic load as well as a full professional load, whether it's music or artwork, you know, grafting, whatever, welding, could be just about anything as far as the artistic talents go. It is super difficult. Um, is that something that's going to take away from your training time and your training mentality, having to get your daughter cut it back and forth, you know, between schools and, and getting your training time on time as well? Is that going to curb anything at all for you? No, I have a lot of help. You know, my wife's great. My wife takes takes the lead in that, you know, picking her up, getting her down there. Um, you know, we switch off when I can when I can fit it in, but I treat uh, training like a job. You know, I can't just skip out on my job to go do something. So I build my schedule around training. And uh, if I'm unable to pick her up or drop her off or get her somewhere, we have a lot of family that helps out too. And, uh, you know, both of our families live in the area and they're always willing to help pick her up or, or help get her there or, you know, anything we need. And, and everybody's real supportive, which is a, which is a big blessing for us. What's it like being in some of these recitals? I mean, how many other, you know, fighter dads are sitting in there watching their daughters you know, you're wet. <laughs> None that I know of. Is it, do you find it to be a pretty, um, it, it doesn't seem like a blue collar kind of uh, uh, event. Like when you go in there, it's going to be a lot of shirt and ties, a lot of suit coats, a lot of bankers and attorneys. When you're watching these recitals, you kind of get that same sense when you're in there that it's a lot of shirt and tie guys. Oh yeah. I always, you know, I dress up, I bring, I'm not yet. Yeah, I'm wearing a tank top still, but I <laughs> yeah, I bring some clothes to change into so that I don't stick out too much. You know, the tattoos make you stick out enough. Yeah, it's got to be. Uh, it's got to be interesting when you have uh, uh, ha have your daughter, specifically a daughter, more so than 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 a son, that's in a a executive type, you know, art that where it's going to be a lot more doctors and attorney dads running around, and you walking in like with a black eye and stitches in your head. You know, it's like I just got done training. What do you want me to do? I can't help it. You know, I got to be here. So, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the parents from her uh, from her school are, are really cool. You know, and they actually got in into following the fights because they know that I do it. So they'll all sit down and watch it on TV and stuff. And uh, you know, a lot of them admit that they never watched it before, but they they good. wanted to see me fight. So that's good. It's good. It, it, that's that's an easy way. It's it's amazing how you can find new fans in the weirdest places. You know, uh, and fans that that wouldn't want to watch the sport beforehand, you know, that, that don't know what's, yeah. what the sport is all about. And all of a sudden do just because they saw you at a ballet recital. Like, oh, I'm going to go follow that guy now and see what he does for a living. You know? <laughs> it, it's tougher yeah, to exactly. follow a doctor. It's tougher to follow, a, you know, one of your one of your daughter's friends is a doctor, has dad is a doctor. You can't follow him and see what he does. You can't follow the attorney around, but you get to follow a guy that's on TV, so it makes it easier, easier for you. Um, talking about being on TV, though, we got to worry about Tom Watson. I mean, obviously the weight class is – can shift your weight class shifts all the time uh where everybody's going to be a placement but the, both of you guys are coming off losses right now where do you see tom come you know how do you see tom coming at you for this fight like how, how do you think he's going to approach you you know i think he's going to come in trying to wrestle a lot more which would be a little disappointing for the fans um kind of a little funny note you look at our stats neither one of us has a takedown in the ufc and uh yeah. You know, not knocking myself, but I've, I've been working a lot of wrestling, but I usually don't go in there and try to take guys down. I'm not trying to take down Jacare and, and some of these other guys have fought. And, uh, you know, Tom's a striker now, and I, I was excited for the matchup because, you know, he's considered a kickboxer, but in my eyes, I'm a better kickboxer than he is. And, uh, you know, I hope he doesn't want to go in there and shoot, and I hope we, we can uh, we can find out who's better on uh, August 8th. 
Well, you know, he, he's gone through a little bit of a, of a mix of himself. You know, obviously, he's with Munoz down there in, in California, and then Mark Munoz closed his gym and retired and, and moved on to, to other things. So, you know, for while Tom was trying to find out where he's going to go, what he's going to do, um, I heard through through the rumor mill that he's moved over to Black Zillions. Um, and so now he's got a new training camp, a new a new uh, a bunch of training partners, new coaching staff. And traditionally, with fighters, that kind of the next fight out, which will be this is his first fight since he made the move, it, it kind of screws at him, you know, because a whole new format. You know how important, like Mark, in your corner, you know, you know how important it is to have the, a familiar voice, to have a comfortable person there. Tom's not going to have that, you know. If if the roles reverse and this is happening for you, how difficult do you think it'd be for that first fight out trying to trying to figure out this new group of guys that now is going to be your support group? Oh, I wouldn't do it. You know, I wouldn't switch camps uh, before a fight because, like you said, you know, you, you got to train these guys to to know you. You know, they don't know him, his coaches. They might He might have cornermen that are his buddies or, you know, the coaches at the Black Zillions, but they don't really know Tom yet. And um, I think that just throws things off. I think it kind of throws a wrench in your training. You know, it's, it's good to switch things up and, and get a new look, like going to other gyms and training, but not during training camps um, because that it can really mess stuff up. Like you said, it can throw off everything. And, uh, I disagree. You know, I've been with the same camp almost my whole career. Yeah. Um, and I think Conor McGregor said it, you know, that, that these guys that jump camps, you know, it's almost like showing a weakness that if you're losing and you bounce camps every time you lose, you know, maybe it's you, maybe it's not the camp. And there, there is something to be said about that, you know, that jumping around camps all the time does make it very difficult. But Tom is in a weird situation where all of a sudden his camp closed down, like his training facility, you know, it was no more. It, it became a situation where, where Munoz closed it. He had no choice. He's got to continue to fight. So he's got to make the move. Hopefully he makes the move and, and, and he becomes a better fighter for it because you two standing in front, you know, in a, in a phone booth in the middle of the canvas, just throwing punches at each other is an exciting fight for the fans. Um, but you said earlier, you think he's going to try and wrestle you and try and take you down because he doesn't want to get hit. Uh, do you really think that that's going to be his, his first game plan is like, let's not get hit and go ahead and try and make this a wrestling match and, and get Chris to the ground? You know, I don't, I don't think he's worried about getting hit. Tom, Tom's shown before that he's, he's durable. Um, you know, he has good cardio, but I think he uses his cardio to survive more than he does to the win. And, uh, I think that switching to the Black Zillions, I feel like a lot of those guys are real good wrestlers. And, uh, you know, he was training at rain. I think, I think in the end he's been working a lot of wrestling and he just hasn't had a chance to really pull the trigger on it. And I think he's going to try, but, uh, you know, I don't think there's any chance that he's taking me down. Do you see yourself finishing Tom Watson in this fight? Do you see getting a, getting a decisive ending? Uh, I do, you know, I need to finish like, oh, we always need to finish, but you know, losing that last fight, they brought me back. Um, Fighting Jacare, he's a tough guy, but, you know, I was hoping to finish him too. And uh, the the level of guys that I've fought compared to Tom is a lot higher, I think. And uh, going in there and, and finishing Tom is a must for me. Chris, thanks for spending some time with us here on uh, MMA Oddsbreaker. This fight's a great fight for me, man. I, I really think this is going to be an exciting fight. I think both of you are going to end up having to use your wrestling. I think, I think whoever establishes the wrestling game is going to be the one that wins this fight. Specifically because it is going to be so tough to strike each other because both of you guys are high level strikers, so it's going to be kind of nullifying. You're going to hit each other for sure. You, you're definitely going to, but you're also the other guy's going to block the other punches, so it's going to be okay. I got to win this round. What do I do? I better get a double leg. If I got to win this round, what do I do? I got 30 seconds left. I better take him down to make sure that the judges know that I won this round. I think it's one of those kind of fights until you find a gap or find a hole. It's going to be an exciting fight for me. This is very interesting. The whole card for me is, is a great card. So. I can't wait to watch it, man. Have fun at the ballet today with your daughter. Uh, Thanks. You, you gotta let me know how that goes. We'll talk after. We'll talk later today off camera. I want to see how that how the whole recital goes. Yeah, definitely. And uh, thanks again. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this fight too, man. I love this matchup. Thanks, Chris. Have a great rest of your train camp, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one.